Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm so pleased to have Sig Harvey with me today. Sig is a, a world-renowned photographer based in Maine, and she is also going to be presenting at the Inspire Photo Retreats coming up in February. And it's an honor to really speak to her because we've had so many different opportunities to connect but haven't because of her busy schedule. And it's finally that just today, really, I said, let's let's talk about your work. Let's talk about let's talk about your presentation at Inspire. And she is so excited to be here as well, I'm sure, because uh, she's coming back to Inspire again. This is her second year in a row that she's back. And uh, so welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Excited to be here. Uh, oh, let's get the accent out of the way, because I know people are going to wonder, like, She's in Maine. Wait, she doesn't sound like she's in. She's from Maine. So where are you from, Sig? I'm from the southwest of England, a county called Devon, and I grew up on a uh, in the moorlands of Devon. Okay, about ten miles away from the nearest town, and um, so I might not sound like I'm from Maine, but I really have sort of made Maine my home, and I feel very much a part of this uh, this community, this state. I love it here. Where do you specifically live in Maine? Is it a is it a in a city or is it out in the in the uh, the, the farmlands of 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 the state? I know sometimes when you think Maine, you think super rural, but actually we're 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 close to uh, where there's a lot going on. We're in I'm in uh, Doug and I live in Rockport, Camden area. Okay. We're about um, a mile out of the village, so um, that it's not it's not so remote. Okay, very good. Um, you are not just a photographer, but you also teach and you've published a couple of books now. Um, we're going to talk about the books, of course, but tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get started in photography and why the kind of photography that you do, which is, if, I, if I'm allowed to even describe it, it's probably, I would say, whimsical, right? Um, and exploratory. I, I feel like you're trying to say, say something specific by sort of using what you find around you. Um, what? How would you describe your work? One one quick question, Sashi. Yeah. Do I st do I look at you, which is, feels natural, or do I look at the camera? Uh, you can look at me or look at the camera. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. You don't have a preference. Okay. So, um, first of all, uh, in commenting about being invited back to Inspire, I was so honored last year. I couldn't believe the community. I couldn't believe the. I couldn't believe how fun and open and welcoming everyone was. I mean, I wouldn't have believed it if you told me beforehand to see it from my own eyes. So I'm so excited to be uh, heading back because um, I want to be surrounded by that energy again. It was great. Um, so back to, so talking about my work, um, you know, it, it is exploratory. Um, and I think what I'm always trying to do is sort of, is push at the ideas of, um, uh, of magic in the world, um, of, of, you know, this world being this, this extraordinary place. I'm very interested in what's sort of real in the world, um, but almost sort of transplanting it so that reality feels somewhat shifted. And I think that's where the ideas that, you know, these are words like quirky come in. Um, right. Because what I'm trying to do, I, I make everything in camera and it very, it's really important to me that they, that, the images that exist in the world rather than made up in Photoshop or something like that. Um, but I'm seeking out moments that perhaps if you didn't have a camera there, they might sort of <gasps> cause you to gasp. So either landscapes that are extraordinary or nat the natural world like fireflies or, you know, a certain sunset or a certain light that just, you know, reminds you that the world is sort of is new again. That's what I'm interested in. And that's the same with, you know, when I photograph my family and friends, I photograph people I know so that I, I recognize these moments when I almost don't recognize them. And that's what I'm interested in as well. Uh, you've, you've published two books. Uh, the, the, yeah. the latest one was just, just last year now, um, and it's called Gardening at Night. Uh, yeah. Your first book, I love the title, by the way. You look at me like an emergency. Where did you get the... the, the the very title where did you get where did you find that title well it came from i've always written and that's something i'll be doing a lot with the, the participants at inspire but i've oh. always written a ton and um it came from when i first met my husband we were walking along um a pathway 
and he was looking at me and I was looking at him and he was looking at me like there was some kind of emergency somewhere. But, and I, I genuinely, cause, you know, it's never the guy, it's never the lovely guy that's looking at you, right? So I genuinely thought that he had an ulterior motive, like there had something gone on, but it was, you know, that there was a fire somewhere. Or there was a, and, um, but it was just the way he was looking at me. It was amazing. So uh, yeah, it, that's where it came from. Now, this book is sold out. I can't even, it's out of print, That's right? It's true. And so actually, uh, Gardening at Night is, uh, is also sold out from the warehouse. So I have some copies and there's a few copies in like the galleries and things like that. But that too is sold out, which is, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It's really, I work um, really hard on these books with the text and the image. And I just am so proud of them. So the fact that they uh, have been selling out really oh, means the world to me. I'm very honored. Uh, you teach as well, and I've yes. just noticed that you're going to be in one of my favorite places in October this year, San Miguel de Allende. I am. Uh, oh my God! I wish I could go, and I, I will. I will lobby like crazy to my wife and say I have to go to San Miguel to 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 be a part of your class. Um, but w the teaching part of it is obviously as exciting to you as is the photography. Uh, where did you get your start in teaching? How did you how did you emerge from like being just a photographer into being a photographer and a teacher? Well, I came to actually the main photographic workshops, which is where um, I think a lot of people from Inspire have had some start. And um, I never really set out to teach. That wasn't my intention. I was doing a Master of Fine Arts, but I was doing it for the work. And um, But it was just in the in the process of that, I sort of was thrown into it. And I realized just how much I, it was such a two-way street. Um, how much I was enjoying it, what it was bringing to my life, what, you know, what I learned from photography through this process, what photography could bring into my life. I loved passing that on to my students. Excellent. Excellent. And so you continue to do that, uh, not just in the U.S., but obviously in uh, other parts of the world as well. Um, tell us a little bit more about your your interest in Inspire. Obviously, you know, last year it was in Portland, Maine, so it was an easy ride for you to come in from Rockport. But this year it's going to be in Newport, Rhode Island. And uh, it's a little bit farther off, but you still, you know, pitched and wanted to be a part of it. Uh, and you've, you are, you've been accepted to be a presenter and a, and a teacher there. What are you going to be teaching us? And why come back? Why, why the need to come back and teach a, at a small, intimate conference like Inspire? Well, I'm coming back because um, it was so nurturing and rewarding. And I, I don't know what I expected last year. I was new to it. And I just didn't expect a group of people that would normally be in competition with each other right. to, I mean, to genuinely just share and give and um it was it was extraordinary to be in that in to be in that room and feel that energy and i just i you know i think that the um the way it's run it's such a well oiled machine um you know just genuinely everyone is all the organizers just coming from this great place so i left there with a you know even though it was that crazy snowstorm i had yes. a smile <laughs> on my face um, <laughs> People couldn't get their cars. I remember it all, but um, yeah, that's right. You no, know, there was just this great, great energy, and I think these small place, small venues, really foster and nurture um, some extraordinary work. And I think also, you know, when we give a lot in the commercial world, we some we need to sort of fill up again in our own personal work because that's what nourishes us and we have to remember why we love photography and why we started in this industry. And I think that I'm quite good at being inspiring around that. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I really, I do feel that I have something to give in terms of the way that, you know, other photographers who give always to other people can perhaps get something back for themselves. Fantastic. Uh, tell us a, a briefly what you're going to be teaching us at Inspire this coming uh, February. Well, it's going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about my process and show some of my work. And then I'm going to do a series of written assignments for my brainstorming, first of all, really trying to get outside, you know, get out what's inside, because that's what we're doing here. Photography is a visual meeting, meaning, um, medium. We're making the unseen seen mm -hmm. through pictures. So the, the emphasis is really on everyone's personal work. 
with me. It's not about their commercial work necessarily, even though I do a lot of commercial work. It's about, you know, feeding the soul of, with your personal work, um, coming up with personal projects. And we do that by, you know, really digging in by writing, you know, what are you concerned about in the world? And that doesn't necessarily mean like boohoo concerned, but mm. more, you know, what do you care about? What are you interested in? Is it a some community event? Is it a personal story about your grandmother? It doesn't matter. But then how do we tell those tell those tools, uh, tell those stories with the tools that we have and the limited time that we have. So we really, we start then brain mind mapping and brainstorming and thinking about metaphor and symbol and all these different delicious tools that we have at hand to tell our stories. So my goal is that people leave there with a really, they know why they, why they selected, um, the stories that they selected and then how to tell those stories. What will it start to visually look like? Maybe even having made a couple of images to begin. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow, what a rich and absolutely, uh-huh. absolutely wonderful experience that's going to be. I, I, can, I, can just, I can just imagine it uh, being in the front seat of your class and, and taking notes furiously and being able to do all these uh, uh, mind mapping that you're talking about. Um, it, it's wonderful uh-huh. that uh, you know, instructors like you who are coming to really inspire photographers for the rest of the year. You know, it's it's sort of like a, a little a little fuel injection in a way to get yeah. get people going. Um, one of the last things uh, I'm going to ask you is, is about the your bio. The the last line in your bio just is phenomenal. I love it. I'm going to read it out. I can't um, even remember it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you, you've 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 sort of described your background in, uh, in just lo- just beautiful uh, you know ways in terms of a uh, way you've been uh, displayed in terms of your work and uh, how many books you've uh, published. Uh, but it's it's almost as if the 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 last part where you're you're home and you're talking about uh, you know the slow passing of time and the natural surroundings of her rural home has made her alert to the magic in the mundane. Yeah. How many of us? really look at the, the the stuff that's around us and say we have photographs right here at home to photograph versus this idea that we have to have a destination wedding to go to or go to another place completely separate and you know not really that are that is part of us in a way yeah. you know what, yeah, it's something I really believe in because the thing is, if we only make pictures when we travel, mm-hmm. typically when we travel, our senses are alive, so That's we right. smell more. We like, you know, it's it, it's very we're very alert. But imagine if we tried to live with sort of heightened senses every day or when we're at home, because I really do believe that there we were surrounded by magic every day, and just trying to be aware of that and and slowing everything down so you you. You're taking time to see what's around you because then it also gives you access. It allows you to make pictures all the time as opposed to the one week a year that you can travel or if you're lucky, maybe it's four four Mm -hmm. weeks. I don't know. But, you know, this idea that if you make – I love the idea of making a little bit very often. And so, you know, by by making work – in your home or near your home and you get to make something on a daily basis or a weekly basis or a monthly basis. I love how things accumulate over time. Um, and I think by allowing photography to come to us rather than us going to photography always, um, I think it just opens its arms wide open and it's extraordinary what can happen when people really start photographing, you know, on their own doorsteps. Let me ask you a follow-up question, even though I said that was my last question. Uh, how do you how do you train your brain to be perceptive to those moments how do you how do you how does that happen is that just a matter of just picking up the camera and looking at you know sitting in sitting in a room and watching the light flow from one side of the room to the other and just sort of appreciating that or is it is it more is it more structured than that i think it's both i mean we sh- there's definitely times where the light coming in, especially this time of year. Oh my mm. goodness, it's extraordinary. And you know, November and Maine, February, Maine, the light, that's sort of the blue of, of twilight, it sort of blows my mind. So there's definitely moments where you know, the, well, and we all have them where the, we realize oh, that light is amazing. But maybe we're just too busy. We're picking up the kids or whatever, mm-hmm. and, and we just don't. We don't. I try and always have a camera with me, so I do make those pictures, and I make sure I do make time. And I, maybe I'll be late, but I I'm going to make that picture. Um, and then other times, um, you know, when it's not, I find like that 
things aren't necessarily coming to me, you know, that then I really do just pick up the camera and go find. And I sort of, I say in my talks, I liken it to going to the gym. I've never regretted, you know, it's the same thing. You never regret going to the gym afterwards. And I've found that by picking up the actual camera and just walking around and seeing through the lens and how the camera sees, it always gives something. Whether maybe, maybe it's a sketch, maybe it's not a final image, but it always gives something back. It's never, I'm never like, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. You know, there's right. always something that the camera sees that I really feel, um, you know, can be extraordinary. So it's, it's a matter of doing both. You know, I love it when, you know, the light falls and you're just stopped in your tracks. But if that doesn't happen, there is something about the discipline of art of sort of saying, OK, I'm going to make this make this work that I'm interested in as well. Give me a, a, a glimpse of how you work. Do you work every day? Do you pick up a camera every day? I, you know, I try to, but doesn't work that way. You know, yeah. certain times when I'm in sort of promotional mode or, you know, very busy periods with commercial, you know, work, I'm stuck in front of the computer all day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I try and do something, whether it's writing yeah. or thinking about some aspect, maybe not shooting, but it's editing, it's, you know, printing, it's looking at some part of it every day. Um, you know, I wish I shot every day. It makes me mad sometimes of, uh, that I don't, but I'm just being honest. But I do, I typically, I always shoot every week. Excellent. You know, every, every few days I'm always making something. Awesome. Uh, folks, this is Sig Harvey. Uh, she's going to be at the Inspire Photo Retreats conference taking place in February in Newport, Rhode Island. And uh, it's going to be a pleasure uh, just sitting there listening to you again talk about your work I'm sure and learning from you um, I think it's uh, you know uh, instructors like you that make this conference such a rich experience for everybody so thank you for for making the time to be there I really appreciate it oh, of course and thank you you have such a great energy I can't help but smile when I look at you oh, like... thank you <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, you know I'm, su I'm surprised we didn't meet last year uh, I know, but it was I guess it's it, super busy. It right? was it was chaotic in a little in a in a little way, you know, with the with the car situation. But before even before that, I was jumping from one course to another because there's so many amazing instructors, so many amazing classes really to go to. Um, so anyway, I will make it a point to be in your course uh, at Inspired this year. So thank you. Oh, well, wonderful. Well, I look forward to seeing you front and center. We'll get into figuring out what your personal project is. But, oh, I have ideas. Okay, and trust great. me. I have lots of ideas. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. I'm honored. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.